second only to safety equipment. A battery is one of the most important things you can have on your boat to ensure a safe and enjoyable day on the water. Now whether it be for your trolling motor, house accessories, or to start your engine, the choice that you make for a battery will last for a long time or you'll be dealing with the effects for a long time. Batteries come in several different technologies and types. Most common are lead acid batteries, AGM, absorbed glass mat, but in recent years, lithium batteries have become more and more popular for the boating and marine environment. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Epic 24 volt, 50 amp hour trolling motor battery that I installed on my 1998 Egret. Why lithium and why Epic? In short, I really wanted to take some weight off the boat, simplify the trolling motor battery setup, and based on all the research I had done, Epic seemed to be the best battery for the price point, especially considering the battery itself is IP67 dust and waterproof. So with this, let's take a look at my install. The Egret 167 comes with a purpose-built storage and battery compartment located directly under the rear seat. Installing the new Epic battery was very easy. First thing we had to do was remove the old AGM Odyssey batteries. These are a Group 31 battery that weighs nearly 70 pounds apiece, so that's 140 pounds of battery sitting there. Next, we would clean out the storage battery compartment area. Finally, install the new Epic 24 volt 50 amp battery along with the 24 volt 15 amp charger. The Epic battery weighs in at a paltry 34 pounds. In essence, I just saved 106 pounds off of the stern of this boat. A nice little perk that comes with the Epic battery is a state of charge monitor or an SOC monitor. I call it a sock monitor. Basically what it does is gives you a quick visual of the state of charge of your, mo of your battery. Now if you take a look, there's multiple bars on here. There's actually 10 of them. Each bar represents approximately 10% state of charge. So if your battery is at 50% state of charge, you would have five lights lit up. Now this was gonna be a really nice addition to my boat and I knew exactly where I wanted to put it, but this is kind of where I think Epic lets the customer down a touch. It would have been nice for them to provide a cutting template highlighting the position, the size, and screw hole location to make cutting easier. And since they didn't, I went ahead and broke out my grandfather's micrometer, fired up Adobe Illustrator, and I just decided to create my own template. Template in hand, I prepared the console by removing the gauges taping off areas to protect the surface, and cut the hole required to mount the sock monitor. Install went pretty easy, and now I have an easy way to quickly monitor the state of charge for my trolling motor battery. With a 106 pound difference between two Group 31 AGM Odyssey batteries at 70 pounds each, or 140 pounds combined, versus one Epic 24 volt 50 amp hour lithium battery at only 34 pounds. The skiff must draw less water, right? It does, right? Well, let's find out. So how did I test this? I started off by ensuring this skiff was fully loaded for a day of fishing. My fuel tank was full with 44 gallons of fuel at six pounds a gallon or nearly 240 pounds of fuel. I had all of my tackle on board, my rods. I even put several cold drinks in the cooler. I wanted to make this a real world test, not some sort of fake test to try to impress somebody, but how did this really impact my skiff, how I use it every time I go out on the water. In the end, with no batteries on, on board, this, my egret draws a little bit more than 11 and a half inches. Now remember, this is with no batteries on board. So then I added the Epic battery and technically you can see it is sub 12 inches, but only by a hair. So adding just 34 pounds did make a difference. 
So I took out the Epic battery and I dropped back in the two AGM batteries. And as you can see, it is a little over 12 inches, so a little bit more than a foot of water. I marked each measurement on the blue tape and then pulled the boat out of the water after the testing was done for a final inspection. And there you go. All that effort and all that expense I gained, or lost, less than an inch. Some final thoughts. The original idea was to take and swap my AGM batteries at 140 pounds and replace them with a 34 pound lithium battery. And for that, this has been a resounding success. Now on my boat, with the hull shape that I have, the style of boat it is, a 106 pound difference in batteries made less than an inch difference in overall draft. But it would be really kind of ill-conceived to try to take some sort of linear estimation between what my 16-foot skiff does and maybe your boat with a similar battery. What I can tell you is that the performance of the boat certainly has changed. Gets up on plane a little bit quicker by maybe about a second or so. I haven't really seen faster wide open speeds, but overall the performance of the boat does feel a little lighter. Now am I disappointed? If my only reason to do this was to make the boat float shallower, I might be a little disappointed. That really isn't the long-term gain here. The long-term gain is really around trolling motor. The batteries were designed to run a trolling motor. And for that, they do a great job of it. You know, one of the advantages with lithium is the fact that the voltage remains very high for a longer period of time over the state of charge. Unlike, say, a lead acid or AGM battery, where you have a very high amount of voltage in the beginning, but as you use the battery, it can drop off pretty quickly. Now this brings me to a bit of a note, and that is, you gotta be careful. Uh, Minn Kota has actually come out and said that if you're using lithium batteries, not to move or not to go faster than 8.5 out of 0 to 10 on the speed controller, especially for any long period of time. And the reason for that is lithium ion batteries carry a much higher voltage. 27 volts is not uncommon for where a lithium 24 volt battery could be running. And that extra voltage, I guess, could damage the trolling, motor bat uh, the trolling motor itself. Something to definitely consider. Now another thing to consider is my overall experience buying an Epic battery. I will say that I have done a tremendous amount of research and I've looked at almost every single brand that I can find on the internet. And I have not found a brand out there that is as well constructed, well thought out, certainly designed for the marine environment, um, especially the price point. The pricing of an Epic battery really makes it something that you want to think about. Now, is it all wonderful roses? No. As I noted in the video, you can see that they didn't put supply a template for the sock monitor. Well, I made my own and I can probably have a PDF out there if people need a copy of it. The other thing that is a little annoying is the documentation. While they do provide an owner's manual, um, it's a little thin, to be quite honest with you. I really wish there was more detail in the owner's manual, especially about some things that may catch you off guard if you don't already know these things. And one of them is the application. Now, they have a really powerful app. I like it, I use it. It gives you a tremendous amount of data. However, don't connect the battery to the app before you've done your first initial 100% charge. There's a risk that it will interrupt showing the state of charge of the battery and you have to reset things. That's not in the manual. The other thing that's not in the manual, which I thought was interesting, is the battery has a power button. Now, this is a bit odd if you think about a battery because the battery posts would always be live, but because there's a battery management system, a BMS, you can do a lot of Google searches out there about what a BMS is and what it does, 
it will turn on the battery and turn off the battery. The posts go live or basically go dead. They go from reading about 27 volts when it's active or on to reading about a volt when they were turned off. Now this is actually kind of nice. The problem is if you have the Bluetooth app on your phone connected to the battery and you turn the battery off, it starts to beep at you. Now, there's no documentation to tell you that the reason the battery is beeping at you is because the Bluetooth is connected. I only figured this out by turning the Bluetooth app off, then turning it back on, and realizing the beeping that the battery was doing is because it was connected to the app. Very strange. And again, just not well documented. So overall, I would say that my purchasing experience was great. Uh, the battery was, came on time, as described, shipped in a, a really great packaging. Uh, you get a lot of neat features. Bluetooth, it's heated for those of you who have to, or fish in areas that are cold or sub-zero. Doesn't happen here in Florida. But there's some places where they could just do a little bit better. Now, one thing I will say is they have a very uh, popular Facebook group of, um, for Epic batteries, and there's a lot of great information you can receive there. So again, overall, I think it was a great battery. Great purchase, happy I did it. Uh, could things be improved? Absolutely. There's one last thing that I just gotta state, and it is a kind of strange thing. In the app itself, there is a monitor which shows you state of charge from zero to 100%. And this to me feels like the difference between a user and a software designer. When the battery is a low state of charge, say 10, 14%, the needle points to an area that's highlighted in green. When this battery is at a high state of charge, say 100%, 85%, the needle is in the red. To me, this is very counterintuitive. And personally, I would want to have changed if I was designing the app myself. Other than that, I really have no other complaints. The battery has performed exactly as I expected, has been great out on the water, uh, works wonderful, gives me plenty of charge. Even though it's a 50 amp hour, I fish all day on it with no issues, come back and I still have 60 to 70% state of charge left. So I'm very happy with that. The charger that it comes with, the, or that you can purchase, uh, the 24 volt 15 amp charger, really nice, well thought out, perfect size. Um, yeah, it's been a good battery and I can't complain too much other than what I've already complained about. So with that, this is a, an unofficial unreview of the Epic 24 volt battery by Captain Jan. Thanks for watching.